Okay, hi, welcome back, Leo. It's been a while. Uh, this is part two. I am recording this on August 7th, 2020. Um, I know this is kind of late. You're going to be getting this on Friday or early Saturday um, of this week. Uh, sorry for the delay. There have been some screw ups, problems with technology this week, but it should be better. Uh, and I'll be getting back on schedule again next week. Um, <laughs> this one runs the risk of me making an, a lot of enemies in the Leo community this week. Uh, this is a general reading. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe if this is of value to you, <laughs> if you don't run away screaming in anger. Um, but uh, I'm a psychic medium if you don't already know that. My name's Anya Briggs. Hi, how are ya? Welcome back if you are a subscriber and let's get started. Um, this week's energy that I'm picking up on is general. Like I said, this will most likely have to do with Leo sun, moon, or rising. And keep in mind, these things that I'm mentioning may have something to do with uh, someone else in your life. It may not have to do with you if you are in fact the Leo and mention. It may have to do with your life situation or someone else. Um, <clears throat> the theme is called Another One, as in Queen's song, Another One Bites the Dust. And I keep hearing the lyrics, and another one gone, and another one gone, and another one bites the dust. And um, it, what I'm getting from that is people are leaving you in droves. I've just been, my guides are so funny. I work with my guides um, and they've made pretty much all of the readings this week with the exception of maybe one or two themes being around titles of songs so they have a funny sense of humor but you may not think this is very funny um, people are leaving you in droves and that's actually probably a good thing they need to go off by themselves rest assured they're finding themselves they will come back um, and I, oh, hi, my cat just showed up. He likes to show up sometimes now when I do readings. It's funny because he's on personal evolution. He used to stay far, far away and now he wants to be a part of it. Okay. I'm just so you don't fall off the couch. I have to smush him back a little bit because he likes to sit on the edge and then he falls off. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, you may have people coming and going, mostly going right now, Leo. This is a redirect. This is um, something that has to happen mostly for the other people in your life. They are going through a lot. And I was guided to talk about this. This is really weird because this person means a lot to me and I can't say how I know them, but I know them, if you know what I mean. Um, even though I don't by the standards of 3D reality, but I do, I do know them. And it's really funny because um, I've noticed that this person started regressing and falling back on old pa patterns and behaviors that no longer serves him. He started smoking again. Well, he started vaping. He wasn't smoking, but it ha it's, I can feel that it has a negative response to his chest cavity, that it's not gonna be good for his respiratory system or his heart rate or anything. And I do feel people who I'm connected to uh, as I am a true empath, meaning I literally feel what people are going through. I'm also a medical empath. Um, so I get like physiological, I'm not a substitute for medical advice, but I do get that kind of thing. And feeling physically sometimes with when this person is breathing, I can feel because of the vaping, it's, uh, it might be restricting um, eventually to his breathing if he's not already noticing a shortness of breath. And it's weird because um, it's, it's called regressing, but it's also called um, protest behavior is what it feels like against a reaction to something that I know he's going through because I'm experiencing as well. It, it's about potentially a woman he likes or um, something to do with intimacy. Both are intricately linked. 
and it threatens his protection and his sense of safety. And so he's looking to other people to model from because he's feeling kind of jittery. And he wants to rebel as a reaction, which is a protest behavior. It's a psychological term. Um, he doesn't want to acknowledge the feelings he has for someone. Um, and my guys were saying, feeling scary. Like you have to say it like a little kid. You know, um, his attachment style they're calling is burned. If you know about um, attachment theory, there's different types. One of them is dismissive avoidant or fearful avoidant, um, which is um, one that he is. There's one that's ostensibly called secure. I don't believe that exists. I think everyone has an insecure attachment style to a greater or lesser degree, but okay. Apparently there's this thing called a secure attachment style to a significant other, to a, meaning, a meaningful relationship. And then there are um, fearful, anx anxious types and avoidant types. So we all have different responses depending on different experiences we've had in our lives. And this does apply to you, Leo. I'm feeling very strongly I have to say this, even though <laughs> Leos don't really watch my channel, but whatever. Whomever this is applying to, it should apply to you as well. This has to do with avoiding codependent um, or approach avoidant behavior. Approach avoidance is a form of codependence as well. And it's basically in the form of controlling behavior or trying to control situations or um, being angry at the response to intimacy or uh, sabotaging through anger or rebellious types of protesting behavior, which is like, you can't tell me what to do, kind of like a teenager. Um, things that would sabotage, things that would, um, it, it's weird because protest behavior is also used to get the attention of someone. It's like negative attention seeking that you're trying to get, but it's also um, a, a search for independence, which is also the search for the self when you're healing codependence, which is what this person is doing. And probably this behavior manifested because the expression of love um, that he received growing up was, um, it wasn't really love, it was smothering, boundaryless, and um, enabling. And the, the mother told him everything, good, bad, and otherwise. I know he's not gonna like me saying this, but this is what I'm guided to say, and it's easier to do this than ask um, forgiveness, you know, it's easier to do this than to ask permission now and just ask forgiveness later. Um, because I feel like this would help others and I'm not doxing him or anything, but he knows this is about his experiences. So it's a boundaryless mother told him everything about her life that she shouldn't have. She told him things that adults should not tell children's and that children. And that's what um, creates something called parentification, where if the mother is anxious, say, and I believe this has to do with you, Leo. I feel like one or more of you might be doing this to someone else. So watch out. You have to take responsibility for your emotions and your emotional life and your traumas and your childhood traumas, which I believe every human is born with. I don't believe we're exempt from that at all. But anyway, this mother basically treated him like an adult rather than a child, almost like the absent husband that she should have had minus the... I mean, I don't know if there was actual incest with the biological mother but um there is a thing called emotional incest which is also what causes parentification it's not what you think it is it's um no boundaries in a parent child relationship and then the parent tries to adultify the child and then the child grows up joyless and untrusting and hating intimacy or anything akin to that because the mother was trying to make him really more like a substitute husband, um, usually minus the sex, but it doesn't exclude actual incest in some cases as well. Um, it's wrong. It's abuse. It's abuse. It's abuse. It's psychological abuse. It's emotional abuse. It's putting on burdens on children when they're too young and forcing them to grow up too fast. It's just wrong. It's bad parenting. And so also sometimes adultification happens when the, the burdens of the household, like say there's an alcoholic in the family,
who doesn't take care of the things that the adults are supposed to be taking care of so the child has to clean and cook. It's not just taking on the emotional labor of a parent, but sometimes the actual physical household stuff that you have to do. The lack of filters and telling her child everything, and I am getting very specifically, this is like a mother doing this to, I'm getting in this case for the audience, um, a daughter, but I'm relating this story because I feel like it's important for the audience. And this is stuff that has kind of been talked about a lot as well, but in this context, I'm specifically reaching out to Leo this week for this, to either tell Leo to stop doing this or to make them aware that this is dysfunctional behavior and that if it happened to you, to become aware of that so you can do something about it um, in therapy or wherever, but to understand that it's not your fault if that was done to you. And I'm very sorry if it did happen to you. It's a terrible burden to give a child. But at the same time, to give it a name sometimes helps. To identify the behaviors and the patterns helps end generational trauma and abuse. And it begins and ends with each individual who decides to do that, to be the trauma ender, to be the abuse ender to become aware of those patterns and do something productive about it rather than be held by it hostage. Um, so um, this week, um, uh, I don't know if this could apply to your situation this week, but it feels like it. It really feels like Leo woman is doing this. It doesn't necessarily have to be you are the Leo woman doing it if you are a Leo woman but I'm feeling like a Leo woman is doing this to a child right now. And it could be someone watching, I don't know, but if you're currently doing something like that, if you're unburdening yourself of all your adult problems with your child, that's wrong. Stop, don't do it. I mean, unfortunately, Child Protective Services doesn't include emotional abuse as part of the criteria for removing a child from a home, but it should. And that's one of the things that's an indicator of bad parenting. Um, and honestly, you're not doing your child any favors. You're not parenting your child if you are parentifying them. So um, also if, again, this could apply if you have a Leo mom and she did this to you. I'm very sorry if that's happening, if that's the case. Please stop it at once if you're doing it. It's not right. Um, Otherwise, it looks good. I'm feeling like it's going to be really rainy for some of you weather-wise and to be careful on the road if that's the case. Um, like this is hurricane season in the United States right now, so you have to be careful, especially if you're in the eastern seaboard of the U.S. Otherwise, um, stay tuned and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.